come back, sir? Oh, sure. Just in time. There's the old codger himself. He goes into that sing song of his of how him and his partner McCall founded Seward, or Ghost Town as they now call it, and that this is the biggest mine in nine counties, that they once owned the bank, the saloon, and the general store. Say, I'll feel like Kroger. Now you shut up. Keep still. I'll do the talking. Okay. There's a million dollars still in that mine, and you know it. And it's up to us to get our hands on it. All right. He tells you the same thing. Him and I discovered this mine, and when she was paying rich, we built that town over yonder. I know it. Shut up. Uh, we owned the bank and everything in it. And some morning you're going to wake up and find Ghost Town ain't Ghost Town no longer, but Seward again. A booming town, and the Royal Flush are going full blast. Do we believe you? That's the reason I want to buy in with you. Now, we're promoters. We know a good thing when we see it. Any fool knows this mine. Guess me and McCall ought to know. Took good many thousands out of it. And if we ever find that vein... Mr. Rankin! <laughs> Mr. Rankin! You've got it! You've got it! That stuff I put through assays well over 1,800 a ton. <laughs> well, it, it ought to. Uh, that specimen I gave you was from our first pastry, which petered out, and which we ain't been able to find since. Uh, that was uh, 15 years ago. Uh, uh, look here, young man. If you're sleepy, you better take that hack of yours back to town and rent yourself a bed. You'll find a nice soft one at Mrs. Rose's boarding house. <laughs> 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 Mr. Rankin, you'll have to pardon Blackie. He suffers from insomnia. Well, he couldn't sleep no matter how good the bed is. Hmm. Well, that's all right. But when I'm yawned at, I always get ringy. <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Rankin, forget it. It's all right. I planted them charges, Mr. Rankin. Eight sticks of dynamite. I'll touch them off first thing in the morning. No, I don't like that, Gannon. Me and my partner has a rule never to leave powder charges in the mine. We always fire them just as soon as the man is clear of the tunnel. You want me to go back in and set them off now? No, 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 no. You're a new man. Maybe you didn't know the difference. Uh, go on home. I'll attend to it myself. All right. I won't make the same mistake again. Well, see that you don't. Mr. Rankin, won't you take our proposition? We'll take an option on the Royal Flush here at your price. With our backing, you can make a big go of this thing. It ain't for sale, and we don't need your backing. Mac and me will make a go of it ourselves. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. Come on, Blackie, let's go. I'm sorry I spoke out of turn, Mr. Rankin, but I was so excited I wanted you to know the good news. <laughs> That's all right, bud. But I didn't want them two to know we'd found the vein. I don't like them, and I don't trust them. But you have found it. Well, that sample I ran through shows she'll go way over 1,800 a ton. Well, Mr. Rankin, that's high grade. High grade? Oh, if we had a little capital. It may be that's what Nicole will be bringing us back from Soledad. You know, I figured about $10,000 would put us on our feet again and make Ghost Town a real town. Uh -huh. Well, it's a nice thought anyway, ain't it, bud? You bet. <laughs> Fly man, we'll take as far as we're going, down to Rosie Boarding House. Thanks for the lift. What did you find out, Gannon? Oh, they've struck it all right. 
a pace streak a yard wide. But don't kid yourself. They know what they've got. We ain't worrying about what's in the ground. We're worrying about what his partner's got. Oh, you mean McCall? Well, get this. He went to Soledad three days ago, and he's due back again today. And if my ears didn't hear wrong, he's carrying about 10 grand in bills on him. They've got some funny idea that they're going to reopen the mine and the bank and the town and everything on 10 grand. <laughs> when we get through looking at this old cottage of McCall, he won't be looking at anything. You got a gun for me? Yeah, 45. Here. Thanks. Well, where to? Go ahead. I'll show you where we turn off to wait for him. Come on, come on, will you, Aloysius? Don't start acting like a mule. Huh? Oh, Hemlock, hold everything. Say, mister, you're mighty lucky you didn't have a rear-end collision with Aloysius there. If you had, he'd have kicked this old automobile clean out from under you. <laughs> Say, this darned old tin can has been mixed up with a lot of worse things than an ornery mule. Hey, what's the matter? Can't you handle the critter? Well, I'll tell you. Aloysius only joined me and Sonny a couple of weeks ago. He ain't right well acquainted yet. He'll be all right since we get used to one another. You ever tried building a fire under a mule? No, sir, I never did. But I knew an old fella did once. And that mule hauled off and kicked his fire all to... Uh, well, up into the hayloft. That set his barn afire. The sparks from a barn set his house afire. No. Do tell. That's right. Then the sparks from his house went and set the schoolhouse afire. Huh? Oh, get out, you stupid. <laughs> no, I ain't. No, I ain't. I tell you, I ain't. Uh, of course, I ain't exactly sure of all the details, but, uh, well, it all happened a long time ago. Maybe better skip it. Gosh almighty, what the Sam Hill are you doing down in this country? Well, oh, just moseying around. See, I heard about this ghost town and thought I'd come down and have a look-see. Well, gosh sakes, don't you know me? I'm Jim McCall, the fellow that founded Ghost Town. Me and my partner, Rankin. Jim McCall? Well, you old sidewind to you. How are you? <laughs> Wyoming, all right. Yeah, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. You got the right state. But you ain't got the right town. Cheyenne. Huh? Oh, oh, oh. I knew it was in Wyoming somewhere. Yes, sir, that's right. Cheyenne, Harry, by all that's holy. <laughs> How are yes, you? Sir, good, good, good. How are you? Yeah, I got it all figured out for you. Now, he's got to come through that little pass up ahead. There's no other way to get into Ghost Town. We'll block the road, and that'll make him stop. And that's when we get him. Well, what are we waiting for? Move the car off the road. Me and Blackie will fix the trap. Well, you certainly picked a swell spot. I'll say. Yeah, that's just a piece we need. Let's grab a hold of it and roll over in the middle of the road. Did that do? Yeah. And to help me, Cheyenne, you're coming just in time to see the last of Ghost Town. Why, man, think what a fella can do with $10,000 cash right in his hands. And there's hundreds of thousands in that royal flush just waiting for us to take it out. Nobody knows it but me and my partner. So you're going to make old Ghost Town a real live town, huh? You're darn tootin' I am. I got the 10,000 cash right there under the seat. Well, I got to be going. Rankin will be worried about me. Well, so long. Sonny and me will be camping along here somewhere. Maybe we'll drop in on you manana. Good. We'll be looking for you, Wyoming. Uh, 
I mean Cheyenne. <laughs> so long. So long. Well, if this don't stop him, I don't know what will. A well, 45 might. That's where we hide. When he stops here, he won't be able to see us, and we'll get him. him. I tell you that it worked. Tell him to lift him, Morel. He might recognize my voice. See where you are. Reach for it. I knew he'd fight. We still got a chance to get in that ten grand.
down there, Gal. Let's see if we can find any dough. Guy Gannon stared us wrong. That old duffer hasn't got a dime on him. Look what I got. If I get out of it, I'm getting shot up. Oh, well, keep still. We'll get you to a doctor and have you fixed up. There wasn't a thing on him. Is he dead? Looked like it to me. Huh. Well, come on, let's get out of here. Before somebody finds him and blames us for the slug that got in him. Say, do you know what I think? Oh, shut up and get in the car. I'll do your thinking. your money. I'll take care of that. Uh, you fellas seem to be in an awful hurry. Uh, say, what's the matter? Plenty. Where can I find the sheriff around here? Uh, Ultra's house. There ain't nothing much for him to do around here now. Uh, why? I'll tell him. Come on, get over to Rose's house and get that panda black he's fixed up. Where's the sheriff's house? Just around the corner, a hundred yards or so. You can't miss it. Thanks. You haven't seen anything of my partner, Mac, have you? McCall? Yeah. No, he ain't come to yet. Uh, was you looking for him today? Well, I should have been here hours ago. Yeah. Don't suppose anything could have happened to him? Oh, he's all right. What could happen to him? Uh, I don't know. Maybe plenty. out just you said. The old guy comes along from Soledad, we try to stop him. Some bird butts into the party, and I get it. They didn't get a look at you, did they? No, I don't think so. Well, if they did, we better scram out of this town. Don't be in such a hurry. We didn't send you here three months ago to open up a boarding house for nothing. Now, things are going as we planned. When we check out of here, we're going to own the Royal Flush, and we're going to pay for it with the dough that that old codger was carrying on him. You'll see. I don't know what you're talking about. This hand doesn't look good to me. Let me go get a basin for it. We don't need all you fellas in here. All right, go ahead, Mr. Morell. You'd better come on in, too, Mr. Rankin. Mr. Gannon here will explain it to you. My partner and myself being strangers, we got the directions all mixed up. Howdy, Mr. Blair. That's Mr. Hawks, and this is Mr. Morrell. He's already introduced himself. Well, I met him when they come up to talk to Mr. Rankin about buying the Royal Flush. But Rankin refused to sell. They picked me up on the way to town, and I told him I knew about some other properties that they might be interested in looking at. We headed down to look at the old Aurora. We heard some shots. Morrell here turned his car around to see what it was all about. All we could see was old man McCall is streaking it for dust, apparently being hit. We couldn't see the fellow did the shooting. No, we couldn't see him. But I got one of the slugs. 
Well, it was mighty nice of you gentlemen to take a chance like that. Well, we'd expect anyone to do that to us if we were being held up and robbed. How did you know it was a robbery? Why, uh, we just naturally assumed that it was. Especially after we followed the car, we found old man McCall laying alongside with his pockets turned inside out. And no sign of the fellow that did it? No, I ain't worrying about the money, Sheriff. I'm worrying about Mac. You see, dead? I don't know. We couldn't see from where we was at. He was laying down at the bottom of a big ravine. We didn't want to take any more chances ourselves of getting shot at, so we headed back for town to let you folks know what had happened. That's enough for us to go on. Now let's see if we can find the fellow that did the shooting. You'd better come with us, Gannon. Glad to. You ride a horse, Gannon? Oh, I used to. I guess I could again if I have to. Now you fellas can come along. I might need help. George, you got horses? Yeah, we'll get them over here at the stable. Mine's over the stable. There. That should be all right if blood poisoning doesn't set in. Yeah, you would think of that. We let the law on them get started. We'll trail them in the car and see what's up. If you'll take my tip, you'll stay here. Now listen to me, Rose. I'm running this outfit. That ten grand didn't vanish into thin air. The fellow that butted into our party, he must have found it. Seen anything of an old fellow in a rickety old car? Why, yes, sir. Why? Well, he's overdue in town. His friends are getting kind of anxious about him. We found the car wrecked and blood stains all over it. Since it was reported he was last seen being set on by someone with a gun in his hand, thought maybe you might have heard the shots and could tell us something about it. Well, now that you come to speak about it, Sheriff, I did run into an old fellow this morning. You see, my mule, old uh, Aloysius, say I got stuck in the road. And I held him up for a little while, but uh, he told me his name was McCall. McCall is my partner, mister. And as the sheriff just told you, we left his wrecked car. He ain't nowhere around it, nor his body either. What's happened to him? All right, heist him. Rang and take his gun. Why do you take a look, see through his outfit? I reckon you're the bird we're looking for, all right. What's your name? I'm sorry, Sheriff. I plumb forgot my card case. Yeah? Where'd you come from? I just rode in from the north. Folks up there call me Cheyenne. Cheyenne Harry Morgan is the name. Hey, Sheriff! Look at this! Them's ours. Them's our bills that poor McCall was a carrying. I figured we'd find something if we hunted through this outfit. Where'd you get this money, mister? I found it in Mr. McCall's automobile after the shooting. You see, Sheriff, there were three fellas on foot trying to hold him up. I cut down on him with my saddle gun and drove him off. No use, mister. That story don't hold water. There were three people saw you do that job, and I was one of them. Oh, is that so? And how come you and your two friends didn't drive me off? We did. But you got away on your horse there before we could stop you. The story sounds fishy to me, too. So you better get aboard that horse of yours and we'll side you into town. I've got a heap of mighty embarrassing questions I'd like to ask you. Okay, Sheriff. Oh, say, Sheriff. Do you mind if I give my old mule here a bait of corn for a go? See, I might not get back in time for his breakfast. Yeah, I reckon it will be some time before you get back.
Sure, but kind of looks like I'm under arrest, huh? Not to give you a short reply, but you are. And I'm going to charge you with the murder and robbery of old man McCall. Well, I don't see how you're going to do that. You can't have a murder, Sheriff, without a corpse. You ain't got any corpse yet. I'm going to start looking for one just as soon as I get you locked up. you been up to? Your dad sent me over the feed barn with a horse. I just came back from riding in his posse. Posse? Sure. We rode out after a murderer. We just brought him back, too. Who did he kill? Poor old McCall. Oh, how terrible. You want me to come in and tell you about it? Oh, yes, do. Oh, poor Mr. McCall. Here's what you asked for. Chew on, have you? Roll yourself a smoke and I'll send you over something from the house. Hey. And they found the car all wrecked down the bottom of the gully. But that's all they know.
Bud tell you about old man McCall? Yes, it's terrible. I don't know if the man I've got locked up is the right one or not, but I'm going to find out. Bud, I reckon I'll have to ask you to stick along as my deputy, at least for tonight. I'll be glad to. I guess I'd better put this money away for safekeeping. Okay. We may need that for evidence. Your job will be to stay here on guard until I come back. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot. You'll have to take a pan of grub over to that Umbre Cheyenne. But don't get too near the cell door when you hand it in to him. Just hand it in and come right back here, understand? Yes, sir. I'll keep my eyes open. All right. Billy, you hustle up some grub out there in the kitchen and be quick about it. Yes, Daddy. All right, kids. Adios. Well, I'll get him something, but I don't know what. Well, a fellow in jail isn't very particular about what he gets. As long as he gets it. I guess you're right. Mike, where have you fellas been? Covering up our tracks. What did you think? Yeah, a perfect job. Shot full of holes. Not to mention my hand. Say, are you sure the sheriff didn't give that package of dough to old man Rankin? He had a right to. He's old man McCall's partner. Listen, didn't I tell you I've been with Rankin ever since coming in with a posse? I just left him. And I told you the sheriff just rode out of town. Well, then it's a cinch that dough's in his house somewhere. Is that girl there alone now? Say, there's an idea. Not a chance. The kid's with her. You know, Bud from the mine. All right, big boy. We've got to lay our hands on that dough tonight. You figure it out. Well, that kid is not so tough. Maybe we could... Uh... There you are. Now, don't spill it. Bud. What? I'm not going to stay here alone. Why not? With all that money in the house. What are you worried about? You know everybody in this town but that Cheyenne fella. And he's in jail. I know, but... All right, then. You take it over and put it through the bars of that Cheyenne fella. And I'll stay here and keep an eye on the money. You aren't afraid, are you? I'm not afraid of any man if he's locked in a cell. That's a girl. If you aren't back in ten minutes, I'll be over with that rifle.
Here you are, mister. Why, thank you, thank you, miss. You gonna sell them? Say, it looks like you'd have to let me out of here to eat it. took some grub over to the jail. The kids in there alone. Let's bust in there now. Now, wait a minute. Not so fast. Hmm. Okay, there's pretty good grub. What's your name? Billy Blair. I'm the sheriff's daughter. Dad told Bud to bring it over, but I decided to come instead. Bud, huh? Who's Bud, your brother? Oh, no. He's just a friend of mine and Dad. He works over at the mine for Rankin and McCall. So Bud works for Rankin and McCall, huh? Uh-huh. Well, I, I gotta go now. I'll bring you your supper tonight. Just a minute, miss. Say, I am. Uh, I want to talk to you. There's something uh, you ought to know. Well, Gannon, you know this kid. He's worked with you long enough to trust you. Suppose you go up the front door. He'll let you in. Blackie, you sneak around to the kitchen door and take him from behind as he's talking to Gannon. I'll keep my eye on the outside here. So what do you think of that? That Mr. McCall isn't dead. He wasn't the last time I saw him. But he will be. If we don't get a doctor up there mighty quick. Where have you got him? Oh, I hit him. In a safe place, too. Say, who's those two fellas that... they ride around in an automobile? Oh, you must mean Mr. Morrell and Mr. Hawk. Blackie, they call him. Yeah. Yeah, that accounts for two of them. But who's, uh, who's the other fellow from this town that goes around with him? No one. Mr. Gannon's been showing them around. He works at the mine with Bud. But he's just showing them some mining property. Uh-huh. You got it. Now you've hit it. Morell, Blackie, and Gannon. Those are the three that got Mr. McCall. Who is it? It's me, Gannon, buddy. I gotta see you right away. Well, come on in. It's about the money. Listen, I just left Rose's boarding house. I heard those fellas, Morell and Blackie, plotting to crash in here, kidnap Billy, and steal that dough. Yeah. But well, when they do come in, they'll get a warm reception. Reach for it. Drop that gun. Don't you understand, honey? Blackie and Moreau came to this town to get old man McCall's money. You don't need to worry about that. It's over at our house. And Bud's guarding. It's over at your house? Why, well, isn't your dad there? No, just Bud. And I'm going over there and join him right now. No, you ain't. I hate to do this, miss. But you'll be safer here than you will in your own house. Let me out. Now I'm going after Morell and Blackie. You'll be sorry for this. Maybe so, miss. But this is the safest place for you right now. I take that dose in the bookcase. Maybe it's in the clock. Break it open and find out.
It's over there in the bookcase. Look in the books. I got it. Come on, let's get out of here. Hurry up. Out through the kitchen. They got the money, and you're out of jail. Say, where's Billy? Now, Billy's all right. Nothing's happened to you. Come on, now, I'm here to help you. Snap out of it. Come on. Did you tell him? I'll say we did. Finally, and let's cram out of here. I'm not running away. I'm going to come back here and square accounts with those three birds. Meanwhile, you go on up the street and let Billy out of that cell. Then get a doctor and take him over to the tunnel on the west side of the Royal Flush Mine, you understand? You'll find Mr. McCall there. Now, come on. I'm going to get that money back for you. I'll do anything I can. Gee, in my first day as deputy, too, losing that money. Oh, well, come on, son. Then let's get going. Where's my horse? Over in the feed barn. You can see it right from here. Now listen, you go on up to jail and let Billy out. And you two kids get a doctor out to Mr. McCall if it's the last thing you do. Understand? Yes, sir. I'll take a shortcut. saw him drop into the road. I'm not worried about a single rider, but what's that he's got behind him? Well, that's the law, as sure as we're here. All right, Rose, I've got it. You back the car around and head around that road. You'll find the west end of the diggings, the end of the tunnel. We're going through. We'll meet you there. Make it snappy.
got him, boys. Frank, you and Jed come with me. The rest of you boys, head for the west side and block the other end of that tunnel. Okay, now, Frank, keep your eye open. You bet. You think you can handle them alone? Sure. It's much easier to take them right on through the tunnel, right to his own cabin. All right. I'll get out to my rig and meet you there. Take it easy now. That'd be all right, Jock. Okay, Mr. McCall? I, I still feel kind of shaky. But you can't kill an old desert rat like me. Did you hear what the doctor said? Hadn't been for that fellow Cheyenne, you'd have been a goner. <laughs> he certainly patched me up all right, didn't he? <laughs> He's as good as a doc. Take it easy. Okay. Wait a minute. I got a lantern stash here someplace. Where'll I find it? Here it is. I'll keep this flashlight in case the lantern goes out. Don't touch that. Why not? It's hot. What do you mean? That plunger connects with a bunch of dynamite that will blast this place to pieces. We'd never get through here if it exploded. Let's keep moving. Gee, we're going to be out of luck in a minute. This candle's almost out. Well, we're through the bulkhead and back at the royal place again. Wait a minute. I just remember. I got a couple of candles sticking in a crevice about ten feet beyond that bulkhead door. You better hurry up and get them before your light goes out. Now, take care of yourself. Yeah, don't worry about me. Wait a minute. You see what I see? Wait. It can't be. Put that flashlight on it. They don't lead anywhere. I found one all right. Good. Can you make it? Yeah, I'll get along all right. Take it easy. Yeah, it's all right.
I want you, Cheyenne. You've got the wrong fella, Sheriff. These are the men you want. Hey, just a minute. I want to talk to you, fellas. still be poor as church mice. You know, him touching that plunger when he did and uncovering that vein, well, it's made us rich again. And ghost town just see of the past. Yeah. Come, Come in. in. Uh, well. Hi, Jake. Wyoming, I mean, Shy and Harry, how are you? Well, I just come in to say goodbye to you. Goodbye. Believe Believe it is. Yes, sir. I'm heading south. I'm going down that Rio Grande country. And I want a... I want a little loan. I'd like to get about $100. Huh? Well, uh, what kind of security can you give us? We're bankers now, you know. Can I, can I get a hundred dollars without any security? <laughs> you darn shooting your kid. <laughs> Here. Here's your hundred dollars. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Well, come to think of it, gents, I have got some security. But the only trouble is with my security, it has to be fed twice a day. Huh? Well, what you giving us? Well, I'm giving you all the wishes. Huh? You know, my mule is tied outside. Mule? Well, so long, Mr. Ragan. So long, Mr. McCall. <laughs> 